Welcome to Trucking Sustainably. I'm your host, Jason Morgan. We're at the Volvo Customer Center in Dublin, Virginia. We got the new VNL behind us. We're going to take a deep dive into the powertrain technology with Dwayne Teagles to see how they're eking out even more fuel efficiency. So let's come along and see how they do it. Okay, we've got Dwayne Teagles, powertrain product marketing manager, Volvo Trucks, here to take us through the powertrain options in the new VNL. Dwayne, always great to see you. Always a pleasure, Jason. So let's walk through what are the powertrain options in the new VNL? So we've tried to simplify this a little bit better for our sales uh, associates and also our customers. We've got three powertrain options out there. We start with our Super Direct. Our Super Direct is available in a 405, 1750 pound foot torque engine. And then we offer all the way up to a 500 horse, 1950 pound foot torque engine. Now, uh, it is only available in a direct drive transmission, thus the Super Direct. Okay. Um, so it's a 12-speed uh, transmission. Uh, it's available in a 195 all the way to a 247 rear axle ratio. Okay. So where we see a lot of applications in an 80,000 pound load would be like a 215 in a direct drive right. application. Uh, works very well for those, uh, those setups. Now, speed limit typically about 68 miles an hour would be the top of the mark with that. Uh, so anything over 68 miles an hour, then you'd move to our iTorque specification. Okay. So our iTorque is, again, the, the D13 turbo compounding engine. It's available in a 425, 1750, all the way up to a 500 horse, 1950. Okay. okay. And that is required in a 13-speed transmission because we use some super fast ratios in that. Right. We'll use a 215 to a 217. Uh, for those 80,000 pound applications. However, we're bringing a new one, new iTorque to market for a little bit heavier application, 103 to 110,000 pounds. So kind of like that Canadian market where they right. maybe run a little bit heavier. That's gonna use a 247 and a 264. So those trucks, when they're uh, loaded, going over heavier terrain, they're gonna spend a little more time in direct drive. And then when they're lightly loaded or on flat terrain, it's gonna spend time in overdrive. So the best of both worlds there. Uh, and then the next one we're going to run into is our straight torque option. Now this is designed for that customer who wants a little bit more performance and is not so focused on fuel economy. Uh, so that will be available in an overdrive transmission, 12, 13, or 14 speed, whichever the customer prefers. And that's going to be available in rear axle ratios from 247 all the way up to 342. And weight ranges from 80,000 up to 143,000 pounds. Oh wow. Okay, so and still all eye shift, right? When you're going through the gearing and the speeds that's still all handled with the eye shift. All eye shift, automated manual transmissions, yes. Beautiful. Let's talk about the fuel efficiency. Uh, I know it works, it's up to 10% the new Volvo VNL, right? And right. that's in combination with aerodynamics and the powertrain. Right. Uh, what, uh, how does the aerodynamic dynamic improvements impact the powertrain improvement? Now this might seem a little strange having a powertrain guy talk about aerodynamics, um, but I think the correlation there, uh, it is really symbiotic there because the average truck going down the road requires about 325 horse to go over flat rolling hills. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously there's more horsepower in most vehicles, but that's for cl climbing. But on flat terrain, that's about what it takes. So what we've done is increased aerodynamics by 8%. Now, what does that do to the vehicle? What it's doing is reducing the required horsepower right. to pull a load. Right. So that 325 horse that's required at 65 miles an hour, we've been able to shave off 16 required horsepower okay. off of that. And at 75 miles an hour, now it takes 29 less horsepower because of the aerodynamic improvements. Interesting. So what's that, what's that allowed us to do is look at the engine from a different perspective, such as our, our wave piston. Right. Yeah, walk me through this, because this has been an innovation that you all, you've all had for a little while, but you're, you're increasing and expanding and evolving it here. Yeah, so right now you see a six-wave piston. Okay. Uh, so one, two, three, one, two, all the way to six, right? Yep. Okay, so the seven-wave piston just simply adds another cup into the piston. Okay. Uh, so we're refining the combustion process. The injector will actually have holes for each particular, each particular cup in here. Okay. okay, so seven gives us a little bit more refinement. Okay. Also, we've reduced the load because of the aerodynamics. That allows us to move to a seven-wave piston and give greater efficiency, moving us about 0.7% in efficiency just by uh, changing the wave piston. Okay, very cool. What about turbo compounding? I know turbo compounding, Volvo Innovation, it's been around here for a little while, was made standard a couple years ago. Yeah. How has that improved over here? 
Well, we've done some internal components inside of the engine. So we've shortened the piston height and lengthened the rod. Okay. The reason we do that is it changes the angle of the piston inside of the cylinder. Okay. What that does is reduce the friction pushing on the side of the wall. Less friction, less required horsepower. It's parasitic loss. Sure. So that's going out, uh, out the tailpipe and, and lost fuel. Right. So by changing that, we're able to become more fuel efficient. Um, along with the wave piston, we've changed the turbo compounding, or the turbo slightly. Okay. Uh, we've put a smaller compressor wheel and turbine wheel to optimize the piston design. We've also changed the injector a little bit to make sure it aligns with the seven wave piston as well. The other neat component that we've come across is our uh, uh, variable displacement oil pump. Okay. It's all about reducing parasitic loss inside of that engine. So the variable displacement oil pump reduces the required horsepower just to simply pump the oil. So we've looked at really oh, fine details. Right. Yeah. Um, so it gives the optimal amount of oil without putting out too much pressure or too much volume uh, and uh, consuming additional energy. Right, and something we've talked about before too, but I mean, you're not just changing these in a vacuum. It's not just like little, this is all a system and every time you touch something, you have to look at something else, right? Yeah, you, if, you're, if you're changing the piston, you're changing the injector, and if you're changing the injector, then you're working with the turbo. So everything's gotta work harmoniously. Cool, let's talk eye shift. Okay, let's talk eye shift. Have you made it smarter? Is it shifting even <laughs> smarter now? Tell me, what, tell me what's going on here. Yeah, we've made it smarter. We've, we've uh, improved the software, most definitely. But, uh, you know, it's, it's ones and zeros. Uh, the next step that we look at here is where our clutch is being actuated. Okay. So we've changed the throw uh, on this from four millimeters to two millimeters. Okay. Uh, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, does it? Uh, but then when you look down here, we have our counter shaft brake and our counter shaft brake, we've added in additional uh, disc in there as well to stop that, that counter shaft from rotating. We're trying to match the speed with the input and the output every time we do a gear shift. Okay. And the faster we slow this, counter shaft down to match the speed with the input here, the quicker those shifts are gonna be. Okay. So those are gonna be real seat of the pants feel. Uh, it's gonna keep that engine operating in that sweet spot. Every right. time the engine RPM comes up and shifts, it drops about 28% okay. because of the gear step. And then if this is slowed down as far as the shifting of it, that moves from about 28 to 29 or maybe 30. So the faster you can do it, the quicker you'll keep that, that shift in, in place in that sweet spot. Right, right, right. So the shifts that I already couldn't feel, I'm even gonna feel them even less now. It's gonna be quicker. <laughs> it's gonna be quicker. Perfect. The other side I think that we, we miss in this is this is gonna drive higher performance and even faster rear axle ratios. Customers that may have been hesitant to gravitate to a faster rear axle ratio because they were, um, worried about performance. Yeah. This transmission in combination with the engine improvement torque curves uh, will give you that acceleration uh, of seat of the pants feel. Right, okay, I'm gonna toss one more question at you because yeah. this is trucking sustainably and we're talking diesel, right? But when you look at this and you're pulling more efficiency out of this, how does this work in a whole decarbonization kind of kind of path forward? Uh, great, great question. Efficiency is basically boiling down to less fuel burnt. Okay, decarbonization is less fuel burnt, less carbon emitted. Right. You know, we've had this conversation, it's 22.4 pounds for every gallon. There you go. So every gallon that we save is less carbon emitted out the tailpipe. Perfect, Dwayne, always a pleasure talking with you. Yes, Thanks for taking the time. Thank you.